Hello, welcome back to the channel guys. I am doing a requested video and it is a in-depth walk around and overview of the John Deere 4020. I don't know how long this video is going to be. I'm going to try and keep it below 15 minutes, but we'll see how it goes. So we're going to start at the front. Chains do not come factory on the tractor. That's just an accessory we mounted on there since we had a really wet spring. I got this thing stuck once. I don't know if Uncle Billy or Dad got it stuck anymore, but uh, yeah, we got it stuck once. So the front, we have these um, weights. These are not suitcase weights, I don't think. Um, the suitcase weights are the ones that kind of hang this way. Um, these ones, it's a bolt running through. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I know we added a weight when we uh, painted the thing up, but I'm pretty sure it's a permanent bolt that stays in there. And you just slide another weight on and bolt it on some more. And then, um, it might be, it might be like a thing where you run a bolt through this hole next out and bolt the next weight on. Not 100% sure on that, but that's a simple thing. And then you can get double weight brackets to put weights up here, and that's what these holes are for, for that second weight bracket. You have air intake along the front here, and you have, obviously, the decal, which we hand-painted because these things are like 200 bucks a piece. And uh, this, is, this is not fuel tank. I think it's... I don't know if it's double wall or not, actually. That might be the wall of the fuel tank. We have more air intake here on the sides. Both sides come down like this. And this is the air filter with the oil bath on the bottom. The, uh, I believe it's a 2010 or the 10 series where this is used air out the muffler. Here we have our starter here. This is put on wrong. It needs to be rotated around back where the solenoid is. This is your solenoid. Your solenoid needs to be back here so that we can put the cover on. We haven't gotten to that yet. Uh, every time we see, seems like every time we put the starter on right, we have problems with it and we end up taking it back off and somebody put it that way. I don't know why. And then we have our batteries on either side. This has been converted to 12 volt, so it is no longer a 6 volt system. So it is... Um... I can't remember if this one's a 2 6, two six volt batteries or 2 12 volt. Tractors are different. Um, the 4440 and those ones are 2 12 volt batteries, but they're hooked up in sequence to each other to where it still puts out 12 volts. And something special there. I can't tell you how it works. But we're going to keep moving down the drive line, and then we will come up here and talk about the controls and stuff. So we have our wheel system. And these are different than a car wheel. This whole assembly from here down to here, this whole hub, you could say, doesn't come off the tractor when you want to change the tire. This rim actually just goes around, and you have what are called wedges in here, and you put those in and clamp it so it holds the wheel on. You've got a groove in the rim and everything to put it on. And then you can loosen these and move the wheel in and out on the shaft, which we do actually have to do so we can cultivate corn with this tractor. Because right now, how it's set up, um, it is not set up right. You can see on this side, the fender is on the third hole, and it's got equal clearance there. And this one is on the fourth hole, and it's there. So I'm pretty sure this one has to come in, or that one has to come out. I can't tell you exactly. And then um, on the back here, we have our three-point linkages which this one's broke. It's kind of iffy at the moment. We don't, we have very few implements that use the three point. So like a brush hog and that sort of stuff, we do have one, have three point, but most of the stuff we run is off the draw bar. Uh, here, this used to be a little electrical thing. Don't know what it was, never used it. Uh, this is our baler uh, set up. So we got our monitor up there for our baler. So this is not on a normal tractor out of the factory. This is to hold your center link. Your center link will fasten in here, 
and then to hold it up you insert it here so it'll be coming up like this in an upwards direction we have some jimmy rigged lighting right now because we needed lighting real quick and so dad just went through and slapped some wiring in it and if i put this back here again maybe maybe not maybe all right so coming down we have two what are called scvs or we just call them hydraulic outlets that's simpler terms and it's where your hydraulic hoses for your implements insert in this controls one function on your implement whether it's up down or adjusting something or folding it up or unfolding it and then this one will control another function so this one is a two remote remote's another word for a group of two so this is a two remote tractor and uh, then you have your power takeoff down here or other words known as your PTO this runs your most of your non-stop operation on your implements like a baler to run the functions and everything on that non-stop that's what your PTO is mainly used for and so that spins at a very high rate and we have two different ones and I tried to talk about this in another video but it wasn't easily covered where I was talking about it but this is a 540 rpm PTO shaft this one this is in a storage spot this is a thousand PTO shaft thousand rpm PTO shaft and it's got smaller splines than the 540 that's how you can tell the difference and so you can take this one out by removing a snap ring right here and uh, this pulls right out and you pull this one out and stick that one in and swap them and then put the snap ring back in and so then you can run 1000 PTO implements off of this. We don't have any 1000 PTO implements that this can run so th it's mainly the 540 most of the time. I don't think I've ever seen the 1000 PTO shaft on here so just saying. And then we have the drawbar which is pretty simple. You back up to an implement and it usually has a clevis like this. You back in and then put a pin down through and that's how you pull different things. This one is flipped over because we used it for doing hay and our uh, we try to keep it flipped over so that our windrow when it's running down through here it's not catching on the draw pin or anything on the tongue of the implement or nothing. So that's how we run that for hay. I'm pretty sure it's out a little bit for the hay bind because uh you want it out just past your two back wheels so that when you're turned all the way you're not rubbing your wheels on your tongue of your hay bind which we still do sometimes um i actually bent the tongue of the hay bind once because i was turning and i clipped it a little too long and uh this has two simple lights on each side nothing on the back and then um yeah, nothing on the back. It used to have a fender mount light, I'm pretty sure. Mo I think they all came from the factory with a fender mount, like flasher or hazard light or whatever, but only on one side. All right, so we're now up in the seat. We're looking at the dashboard. This is all covered in dust from grinding feed with it. And so we have our RPM gauge, which ours doesn't work. It's pretty simple because this one, you just bring it as high up. We don't use this overdrive thing on it. We just bring it up to where it stops, and then you'll have a little bit of resistance, and then it'll pop up farther. I've never used that. We never use it, so we just bring it to where that resistance starts. Over here, we have our first SCV controller. So you have forwards and then backwards for the lever, and um, that controls either up or down, or it can be vice versa, however you have the remotes hooked on the tractor. This is your second one, up and down, however you have it set up. And these are exactly how they are on the back. So the left side on the back is your left lever. Your right side on the back is your right lever. This lever is your three point and it stops wherever you put it because different implements require different heights on your PTO. So like plowing, you wanna go almost as deep as you can, well, for the lever you go shallow but you're plowing really deep so you on the newer tractors they have a little stopper that slides up and down next to the lever and so you can stop it at a certain point every time this one doesn't have that so you just slide it to your desired spot this is all the way down and this is all the way up this 
right here is just a little dome light to shine on here. It doesn't work anymore. And uh, we have installed an aftermarket temperature gauge because I guess the other one quit. I don't know. That was already on there when I started running this tractor. And the fuel gauge, ours again doesn't work. I think we have a wiring issue under the dash because sometimes it won't get a solid connection. You got to bang on it a little bit and it'll start up. So then we have our lever, our shifter lever, which if I brush this off a bit, you can see the gear pattern. So we have eight gears forward and two reverse. So it's kind of finicky shifting a 4020 because it's got different things. So if you were gonna put it in first, you'd push the clutch in and you're gonna bring this down to the first opening. Well, see, it's already finicky again. So you'd bring it out a little bit and then over and then there's first. And I'm going to bring you in order of the gear pattern. So now if you want to go to second, you'd come back out. And by the way, you would not shift this like you would a stick shift. You would put it in a gear, whether it be eight or one at a standstill and let it go. And that's how it would run. Um, I'll show you some tips for shifting it once we're through the gear pattern. So we're in, this is considered neutral. Anywhere you're not in a gear, that's really considered neutral for us anyway. And so for two, we'd come down to the next one and go up again. That's two. Now for three, we're going to come back out, go back up, and it doesn't like shifting up that way. So three is right there. It's in between two gears. Three is in between, in between one and reverse. So that's one. So you're going to come back down, and that should stop it in third, but ours doesn't, so you got to bring it down and then back up into third. And then you have your slowest reverse right there. So now we want to go to fourth gear. So fourth gear is down. It doesn't shift good when the tractor's not running. Fourth gear is down two openings and straight up. Now, from where we are, at the third opening down... There is no reverse here or at the next one. It's just over, up, or down, and those are the gears for this selection, and I think I've been pointing it at the throttle the whole time. That's terrible. So our uh, next gear is going to be fifth gear. We're going to pop it out, go back up to here, and it's going to come around. And fifth gear is just like third gear. It's in between second gear and reverse and this is your second reverse so this is your little bit faster reverse um i actually use that one most of the time and then if we want to go to sits sits is all the way down to the bottom and then straight up so right there is sits gear now seventh is back up this way and right there i now don't ask me why john deere put it in this pattern i am i have no idea but it makes more sense once you're out in the field you don't have to be shifting such a wide range once you're out in the field because uh the only time you're going to be in sits gear really is raking hay when you're really flying up and down the field so it's not really you don't really use the fast gears too much i've never used seventh gear um i've rarely used fourth gear the only time i use that is if third gear is a little too slow and fifth gear is too fast usually you'll go from third to fifth and you'll be in that increment in the increment you want but most of the time spent is going to be up in the two top branches and so you're not shifting too far when you're in the field and if you got to back up your most likely field speeds are going to be third gear and fifth gear so you're just sliding back to back up whether you're bailing or whatever and then uh, first gear is like a creeper gear, so not used very much there, and uh, different things like that. So it's a weird gear pattern just looking at it, but once you're in the field, it'll make a lot more sense why it's like that. So con continuing where we left off, at seventh gear, eighth gear is all the way down at the bottom, and straight down right there is eighth gear. So I'm going to tell you some things. Um, how we do it is if you are pulling out of a driveway or anything like that, we will go straight down all the way and put it in sits gear. We'll release the clutch, we'll drive out in the road, 
and then we'll kind of what it's called power shift it into eighth but still use the clutch so we'll go clutch get it into eighth before it stops and then pop it it just makes it a little bit easier on the tractor to get moving you're it's not taken off from a standstill in its highest gear that's how we do it it's just the um it just seems easier on the tractor most of the time and you're not getting your rpm so low on your motor now i forgot to mention on the rpms you have 5000 rpms 10 th or 500 rpms 1000 1500 and 2000 and then you shouldn't really be up that high um so if your idle is around 800 rpms that's standard on almost all uh, tractors, cars, that sort of thing. And then um, 1,500 to 2,000 RPM is where you should be running it when you're in the field. Um, we run it wide open most of the time. Um, you got to wide it, run it up at 2,000 RPM if you're running something with your PTO or power takeoff. So if you're brush hogging or if you're mowing hay or baling hay or doing anything like that, you're going to be running it at full engine speed so that... Um, your PTO is spinning as fast as it can. So if we move over to this is obviously the throttle I didn't mention that and then uh, this is your power takeoff. So your PTO I'm just gonna call it that. Um, you push this all the way forwards and that is engaged. So once that lever is at that point it, it the PTO on the back would be spinning if the tractor was on. And so tip for engaging your PTO try to engage it slowly it's just easier on the implement you're starting and it's uh, a little bit easier on the tractor so we ease it in and then like that and taking it out it doesn't really matter that loud thunk it's because we put a new clutch in this tractor and it's still not quite on so uh, yeah we got some more work to do with that yet this is aftermarket this is a PVC cup holder that dad made because he's got a huge thermos and it's got a slide in there and then um, this is our bailing monitor. This does not come with the tractor either. This down here, this pedal here, is your diff lock. So this will lock your back axle and make it where both wheels are spinning at the same rate and at the same speed. It helps for getting through muddy spots and different things like that. Um, I don't think there's anything else on the bottom. One nice thing they did on this tractor is they included a nice toolbox down here. So you got lots of tools with you wherever you need to go. And uh, down here, this tractor has a, only a one-click key. So the key goes either on or off. So to start it, you're going to turn your key on and then push in this button. Right now, it's this tractor's dead, so it's not going to do anything. Um, this is your lights. Our lights don't work, so that doesn't do anything. We had an alligator clamp hooked up, so we could turn the lights on down there. There's the clamp. And then, um, yeah, so I'm going to climb back down and show you guys what to do before you start this tractor up and um, after you get done using it for the day. So let's climb down off of this. And we're going to, first of all, you want to check your fluids in this tractor. Up here, I forgot to mention, you have your fuel cap and the channel down into the tank. You have your air cleaner or your pre-cleaner I should say this is where your air gets sucked in and it goes down this tube and then into your air filter and then this is your muffler and it's got a cap on it so that you can if it gets parked outside whether left in a field or something if it's on right then it'll be covered up so you don't get moisture and stuff down in here and then when it turns on it's light enough to where it just opens up and the air force coming out of it can open it up ours I don't know what's wrong with it it just obviously doesn't close all the way so what you're going to do is pre-starting it up you want to check your coolant level and this is really tight i don't know why it's so tight on there but your um thing your cap is going to be like spring loaded on so you want to push it down before you rotate it and you're going to look inside i don't know if my camera can even see but the liquid needs to be at the lip that's where it you, it's supposed to be and if it if you get it too full you don't worry about it because it does have an overflow so it will run out and it just runs on the ground though so it's not like it's got a collection tank the combine actually does because 
I guess if it gets too hot, it can... Uh, that is tight. Um, if the combine gets too hot, it'll push the liquid out, and then when it cools down, it'll pull it back in. So that's not a big deal. Ours, obviously, if you were going to check the fuel, you'd check on the fuel gauge, but we stick a long rod or something in and see where the fuel's at in there. And then um, we come around to the other side, and... The next thing you want to check every single time you start your tractor is the oil. Your oil needs to be checked every time because if your tractor runs without oil, you have a big problem on your hands. So uh, it has, I believe, yeah, this has two arrows, one pointing up, one pointing down. You keep the oil in that area, and that means it's good. So if your tractor runs without oil... Um, the reason why you want your diesel engine to warm up before you use it is the oil. Your oil becomes kind of sludgy if it gets too cold and it's got to get warmed back up and it's got to get freely moving throughout the engine again to lubricate it. Now that's what happened with our skid loader. I didn't let it warm up long enough and by the time I made it to where we were working the engine hadn't had oil long for such a long period of time. It started knocking we started having metal on metal, and that's why it's in the shop now, and we're taking the motor out of it because the motor's uh, gone bad. And that can be a very expensive fix, whether on a tractor, skid loader, car, whatever. Track, or, um, engines aren't cheap. So your next thing you're going to check is your hydraulic oil, which this one, it's back here, right underneath the seat. So it's just like your engine oil. It's got a dipstick and... You check it and it has a safe mark on it to where it's got a range on it to where you can check it. It's kind of hard to see hydraulic oil. It's almost clear when it's on the dipstick. You just got to really, really look close and then you'll be able to tell where it's at. And this is your fill for your hydraulic oil. You just take that off and you fill your hydraulic oil in there. And uh, I forgot to mention this also has a foot throttle. So this is also... A throttle I don't use it really it it's more handy if you have a loader but we don't so uh your engine oil goes in here this doesn't have a, another fill it just goes in where the dipstick is and then same with the coolant you put the coolant in where you put where you check it so I think that is everything on the 4020 um, if I miss something I'm sorry put it in the comments below if you think I missed something and uh, I'll try and it might help me covering other tractors in the future. So this is an in-depth walk around and overview of a John Deere 4020. I think, shoot, I think this is a 1965. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it's a 65. It's in the 60s somewhere. Um, yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, press the thumbs up and subscribe and um, I have in all of my videos, there's a couple of Amazon links for different things I use in my videos like these gloves, this headset, and uh, there's a light bar on our other tractor that's also in the description. So don't forget to check those out. If you need it, buy it. it I'll get a small commission and it'll help support my channel and bring new stuff in such as equipment and different things like that. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Plastic on the 20 series, this is metal. I cannot remember offhand, and it is a double wall fuel tank, so this is not the actual fuel tank wall, the fuel tank is inside farther, and it has, I believe this has, this part is an oil bath underneath, and come back around the other side, because I'm pretty sure there's something on the other side, you can see the weight bracket comes all the way back along here, and it bolts onto the frame back here, um, on this side, yep, yeah, we can see our oil cooler running up through here this cools it keeps the oil cool not your engine oil but your hydraulic oil your hydraulic oil cycles through it's kind of like transmission fluid on a car except it does a lot more stuff it powers your steering it powers your power takeoff which is your PTO on the back which we will get to and it powers your hydraulics on the back which we will also get to once we get to the back of the tractor and also in front here um, yeah, I believe it's in front. You have a hydraulic pump 
way down in there uh, that drives off the front of the motor and you have your various hydraulic hoses going to and from it along with your fuel tank right here in the front also coming back we have our alternator and this one has a dual I believe these are called canister filter this is your fuel filters and uh, this is the primer so you have this little lever here and when you run out of fuel or you change the filter you have to sit there and flick the lever back and forth to get it primed up to uh, get fuel back to your injectors and you have your normal stuff your fan you have your valve cover gasket and your injectors up here and your spark well not spark plugs there's no spark plugs on a diesel engine and then up here farther if, I don't know if I can get this cover off there we go you have I believe this is the injector pump and it this one leaks a little bit I'm pretty sure I can't remember if we fixed it or not but uh injector pump which runs your fuel to your injectors and then um gosh I'm getting my camera dirty um let's go to the other side make sure we're not missing anything on the other side this one is a wide front I can't tell you right offhand if they make a narrow front 40 20 I'm pretty sure they do but uh, you have um, intake for air going into your motor here that's the green one and we if we have to start it with ether rather than squirting it through there we have this loose where we can just pop it off and spray it in here and it makes it where it'll react faster and then you have your manifold here which sends it out and 